episode eight of Spinning Dreams. My name is Laura, and this is where I talk about knitting, spinning, gardening, reading, whatever else I have going on. And today we have a special guest, my daughter, Mabel Rosalie, who was born last year, last November. And we'll see how it goes today with her joining us. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I'm going to try putting Mabel down. Right down here in front of me. See how she goes. <laughs> right, so it's been a while since we last spoke and um, a lot has happened for me, but I have to say not as much knitting as I have going on in my head. Um, just with a newborn, it's been a totally different season for us. A lot of learning and we've had a lot of our creative energy going into Mabel and it's been really fun. She's smiling at me down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the things I have to talk about are mostly uh, works in progress. Um, and the first one I want to talk about is the botanist cardigan, which I've mentioned before. And this is a pattern by Thea Coleman and it's in Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. Um, was the choice I made for that. And I'm actually just at the point, I think I've decided I want to break for the pocket or for the sleeves. And, um, I think, I think I'm ready. <laughs> I've never made a cardigan for myself with, with, uh, pockets, which is what I'm hoping to do here in the front on either side. Um, and so I'm not quite sure about the length. If you have any tips or any ideas about, um, how long you prefer your cardigans to be if you have pockets then let me know um, but yeah the this here will go just under my arm and I'm hoping that will be kind of a fairly natural place placement um, anyway we'll see how it goes um, I'm loving this pattern still it's a little bit trickier to pick up here and there with um, with Mabel you know and all the things I've got going on but I am just loving it and she's loving it too <laughs> Um, yeah, so I will let you know how that, how I get on again. Let me know if you have any tips for length of cardigan. Um, next is my free your fade shawl, um, by Andrea Mowry. And I have been able to work on this one probably the most still a long way to go, but it's the, the most, um, kind of mindless knit that I have going on right now. So I've transitioned from the kofti. This is all Mark's hand spun, hand dyed wool. Um, <laughs> so I've moved on from the kofti to the avocado, which is like a lighter avocado uh, dye. And now I moved on to a slightly darker avocado dye. Um, and I'll show you here. It's kind of like more pinky, a little bit darker and a little bit more complex. And I think you might be able to see um, that. So I think it's blending really well. Um, and I will show you more as it progresses, you know, as I go into the other colors, cause I have a, a couple other colors I'll be, I'll be using. So that's that progress and I'm really enjoying it. And I think, um, I would recommend Andrea Maori's pattern. It's very mindless. Once you get to know the structure and just the simple increases and decreases on either end of, um, each, you know, every other row, I think it is. So... Mabel's chatting away down there. <laughs> um, the next work in progress I have is actually just more of a test, um, like a swatch. My sister-in-law, Helen, gave me this for Christmas. It's Lana Grossa, I think is how you say it. It's um, as the brand. I don't remember. I've taken the band off, and I don't remember what um, which one this is of theirs, um, but I know it has a cashmere, a small cashmere content in it which makes it super squishy and it looks like it's a bit of a braid, um, a braided construction. So, um, it's just a different type of a yarn. I've never worked with a yarn like this before. Um, and it's like a dusty pink. It's a little bit, um, I don't know if you'd say marled or variegated. It's very subtle though. And so far I've just got my little swatch here. I just wanted to see how the fabric worked up. And, um, I've worked it on three millimeters and then 2.5 millimeters. Um, and these are my, um, 
um, chow goo circulars um, that are interchangeable that I showed before, and I'm really enjoying that. And they go so tiny, this set, the uh, twist minis that I have. So I can do the 2.5 millimeter t uh, test swatch. And I think I prefer it on the tighter and um, the, the tighter gauge because it has a better stitch definition in my opinion. So we'll see what I'm going to make with this. Um, I have two skeins and I could make something for Mabel because it is a nice, lovely, dusty pink, or I can make something for myself or for somebody else. I don't know. Um, if you've worked with this wool before and you have any ideas for what I could make, let me know. Um, I have thought about, I think it's called, I want to say it's called the ripple bralette or I think it's a bralette. I think I'll post an image or a, um, a link to it. Um, and it's, it could be good with this, um, because it's super soft and it would be great for like close to the skin, I think. Um, and I think it might have some nylon content as well, which would be, make it a durable garment, um, for a bralette. And it just sounds kind of luxurious for me right now being, um, a new mom and having something like that, but we'll see. I mean, who knows? Any ideas are welcome. So that's that. So that's it for my knitting progress right now. <laughs> And, um, the other work in progress I have, as you know, is my hand dyed, um, baby quilt that is looking very squishy and I have it sandwiched together and I've started quilting. So, uh, the way that I do that is I sandwich all three layers together and then I baste it with, um, these safety pins. So you can see one here. And that just holds it all together so that I can do my stitching, which you can see here. And I've been hand stitching. Um, are you okay down there? Yeah? Do you want to come up? Yeah. Okay. You can see the stitching here. Um, and it's not perfect, but it's, you know, it's just meant to be handmade looking. <laughs> and this is the thread that I'm using. It's a number eight in thickness so and it's kind of a cream so that's that coming along and I think it's gonna be so soft and squishy I love it so far and I think she is gonna love it too so I'm really looking forward to that being done sometime hopefully soon Up we go <laughs> go with daddy? I think she might want to go with you. So as I mentioned, I haven't had a load of time for knitting. Um, I found it like very therapeutic when I can knit and like when Mabel is sleeping or something, um, or Mark has Mabel for a little while. Um, and it's so nice to just get my hands going again and that rhythmic, you know, click, clack, click, clack of the knitting and to feel the texture of the wool between my fingers has been so nice. Um, but then there have been times also where she's crying or um, it's time to feed again and I put my knitting down and then I come back to it and I'm like, wait, where was I? <laughs> and that is a little bit more stressful to me. Or um, I, you know, like get two rows done and then I'm like, oh, I haven't made hardly any progress. <laughs> in a day. So that's kind of my life right now. So something that I found really, um, great right now is that we're coming into spring here in Wales and, um, I've been able to pop out into our sunroom or into our garden and do some pruning or sow some seeds, early seeds. And as you know, I've been part of the floral project and I've just got my March, um, mailing my my seeds for this month so this is you know a wonderful group of people around the uk just planting flowers cut flowers um annuals right now we've been doing a lot of hardy annuals for over the winter to um, get them ready for early spring and yeah now we're moving into more of the spring spring uh sewing so we've got borage 
Cosmos Evening Scented Stock. I've never tried that. Sunflower Lemon Queen and Icelandic Poppy. So I'm looking forward to sewing those sometime this month. And um, I think there's something about uh, the sense of accomplishment with, with uh, gardening and you can just pop out really quick and like snip something or <laughs> sew like five seeds and you feel like, oh, I've done something and it takes very little time. And it's also great exercise. You know, I haven't had a lot of exercise since, you know, the last trimester of my pregnancy. So it's been really good for me to get out and I'm really looking forward to spring um, and summer. The other seed company that I would like to mention is Vital Seeds. They um, are open pollinated seeds, which means that they haven't been hybridized, which means that when they produce their own seed, each plant produces their own seed. When you, you know, collect and harvest those seeds and plant them the following season, they should give off a very similar plant to what you are, would have expected from the parent plant. Whereas with other seeds, you might not um, have that same confidence. So it's a really cool um, thing that they're doing, Vital Seeds. This is the little card in their logo. I think that's their logo. And uh, I would recommend them. I have quite a few vegetables and herbs from them, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go. Yeah, so that's my gardening, and I will keep you posted on all of that. This is also kind of garden related. Uh, it's a book that we've really been enjoying. And it's called I am the seed that grew the tree. And this is a national trust, um, book. And we just thought it would be super inspiring. It's basically, uh, a poem for each day of the year, nature related poem, which is so cool. I think that's a really, I'm not a huge poetry person. Like I don't, I don't spend a lot of time reading poetry, so I can't say that I'm really like a, uh, very knowledgeable in poetry, but from what I can tell, these are really nice poems and, uh, they just really are soothing. And I've been trying to read one every day and show the, the images to Mabel, just, uh, just some bonding time that we can do something different, you know, and she's learning language all the time, you know, just soaking it in and loves looking at pictures. So yeah, this is a book I would recommend. It's very fun. And yeah, our life right now, Mabel, it's just all Mabel right now. Uh, it's becoming more and more um, varied as she develops. It's really fun to see her personality come out and she loves fairy lights and the bath and, um, <laughs> and here she is. And uh, her bed, she loves her bed, which is really cool <laughs> for us as well. Cause that means she sleeps pretty well. And um yeah, I think as she develops more, she'll become more interested in, in the things that are going on around her. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I think we'll have a bit more time as, as she grows uh, to spin and knit and sew. I have a few things I plan to make for her, like, um, Fran of Woolen Hearted is doing a Waldorf doll make along. Yeah, you're going to get a doll. That'll be fun. Um, so I'm hoping to make one of those soon and I'm hoping to make her a dress, uh, sew her a summer dress. Do you want a dress? And yeah, so those are the things I have planned and the knits that I made for her, I'll, sh I'll flip a couple photos up for you. Um, the knits that I made for her last year, a couple of them really came in handy. I can say that that anchors jacket, it's been great for her. She's worn it several times. That was Mark's hand dyed, hand spun. And the anchors hat, the, the matching hat, little bonnet, and the newborn vertebrae. I'll, sh I'll show a photo of that as well. She really got a lot of use out of that. And she's still wearing the anchors jacket, the newborn vertebrae she's completely grown out of. So <laughs> anyway, um, I think I'll probably end there. It's been great to catch up and hopefully we'll be seeing you again soon. I hope you're feeling as inspired as I am about the season coming up and that you're just, you know, getting into all of the makes that you've been planning and enjoying that. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.